Hi, welcome to this video tutorial on the Haltech Elite Series ECU. In this first video we'll be looking at getting started with the Haltech Elite, choosing the right ECU, choosing the right accessories and the right wiring kit or loom adapter to install your ECU into your car. The Elite Series is the latest generation of Haltech ECUs that replaces the outgoing Platinum Series. Previously there was the Platinum Sport Series which was your high feature set of ECUs designed for universal applications. For four cylinder, eight cylinder engines, they pretty much covered everything you needed. The Sprint series would be your budget or lightweight ECU with the minimal features you need for say a small four cylinder engine. And they also had the Pl Platinum Pro plug-in series which was a bunch of adapted sport or Sprint series ECUs designed for a specific engine with factory harness adapters in the actual ECU module itself meaning you could literally unplug a factory ECU, plug in a Haltech Platinum Pro, load a base map and your car would start. Unfortunately this is a bit of a difficult way of doing things these days because it means you've got to have a lot of stock of different ECUs. So with the Elite Series ECU we now have four key ECUs going from the 550 to the 750 which would be your class as your new stripped down or budget or low cost ECUs with the basic feature sets and the 1500 and 2500 which are larger, more cylinders, more feature sets sort of ECUs for the top end cars. Haltech now offer you instead of a Platinum Pro plug-in series they now offer pre-made loom adapters for the Elite Series ECU. As you can see here you've got uh, a bunch of either harness kits which include an ECU and a harness or you can buy the harnesses separately and so on. If we look at the plug and play kits you'll see that there's now a whole range of kits where you get an ECU with a standard universal connector to the Elite but an adapter loom which will take you into your factory loom. If you're going down the route of a plug and play option you'll be restricted to what ECU you have to buy and you'll find that a lot of cars will require you to buy the 2500 series ECU which is the most expensive ECU but most featured ECU for most loom adapters. This one here for example for the EP3 Civic does allow a 1500 um, series ECU rather than a 2500. You'll need to go for the, the whole list of ECUs to find out your exact requirement or speak to a Haltech dealer to what's best for you if you wish to go on the plug and play route. The next option is to use a pre-made engine harness. Now this option is for someone who is taking an engine out of one car, placing it into another car, but you don't really care about integrating with the factory looms, you don't really care about anything else in the car, you just want to plonk an engine in a new car with an ECU and have a ready to go harness with all the factory plugs right where cable lengths, you just put the loom around the engine, plug it in, it should work. There's a number of kits available here which saves a lot of time but again like the plug and play option you are going to be restricted to which ECU you have to buy. The final wiring option for the ECU is a basic harness. Now this literally is either just a short bunch of fly leads, I think uh, 1.2 meters long, about 4 feet, with all the colour cones and labels, but that is it. It is then up to you to extend the wires or cut factory looms, do soldering, crimping, etc. and manually wire the ECU to your application. Haltech also do a long flyway loop that I use regularly on race cars which includes a fuse box which has all your basic relays and fuses for your fuel pumps, injection, ignition systems and so on but nice long 8 foot 2.5 meter wiring which you can then lay around your engine bay throughout the body of the car, cut to length and then terminate your own plugs on. Pretty good kit when it comes to doing installing in a, a bare shell race car for example. If you've already got looms in the car which you wish to cut the factory connectors off and then wire on then the basic kit's probably better if you wish to make use of the factory wiring and factory relays and factory fuses. So if we're not going down the pre-made harness route and we're going to go for a self-made harness then we need to next decide which ECU is right for you. So depending on the number of cylinders you have, your requirement whether you wish to run sequential or just semi-sequential injection, whether you wish to run just a distributor cap or direct fire ignition, and the number of sensors you want to run the car will all depend on which ECU you choose. Secondly, not all features are available on the lower two model ECUs. For example, there's no drive-by wire or not control, etc. on the 750 or the 550. If you want the advanced features, you're straight on to the 1500 or above. 
Okay, so before we actually order an ECU, the best thing to do is download the ESP software. This can be found on Haltech's download page, which is under Downloads and the ECU software and firmware. It is the Elite Software Program, or ESP, which is what you want for an Elite Series ECU. If you're using a Platinum Series ECU, then it's ECU Manager. While the software looks the same and you can transfer your skills between the two, they work for independent series of ECU. They do not work for both. Once you've downloaded and installed the Haltech ESP software, you're ready to go ahead and create a base map. If you're using a pre-made harness or loom uh, adapter for your standard factory looms, then you'll find that if you go file and open, in the Haltech ECU maps folder you'll find a whole bunch of pre-made maps. So for example under Nissan we want to go for an R34 uh, GTR RB26 engine, there is a pre-made map for their plug and play kit. So once the base map's loaded you'll find that pretty much most things here are set up for you to actually start the car. Um, you need to verify a few settings though if you're doing anything other than a standard car. For example, make sure your injector calibration is correct and so on. But all the key things like the, inject, uh, the engine size, the firing orders, uh, trigger patterns and offsets and so on, all the basic settings we pre-set up for you to get the car running and start to at least begin to tune. If you are going for a direct wire kit and you're doing all your wiring manually, then what you'll do instead of opening a base map is go file and new. This will then let you choose to create a base map from scratch for the specific ECU you want. So in this case we're going to create a base map for an RB26 that's been highly modified. So we're using an Elite 2500 CC series ECU. The firmware release we can use the latest version. There's no reason I don't think to use anything other than the latest unless there's a specific bug or requirement you wish to work around. Um, but you can find any information about it on the release notes from Haltech. For rule of thumb, you're generally going to want the latest version available for that ECU. So click OK and that will create a brand new base map for that ECU series. First of all, what we're going to do is assign our pinouts. So by doing this we're going to the setup menu and then choosing main setup. We're now going to assign the ECU functions we want to various pins on the ECU. So there's a really good feature on the Haltech Elite series which is View IO Report. So at the bottom of the setup screen is this button called View IO Report. This makes it so easy to see what wires do what and if you're using a Haltech loom all the colour codes will be there as well as the pin the pins they are on the actual plugs in the ECU, what the actual pin assignments are and what role they've been given all listed in front of you. So here's all your analog inputs, your digital outputs and so on. Everything here you need is set up in a huge list that you can just go through and carry out your wiring. You'll now find as well you've got a whole bunch of unassigned available pins. So assume we've chosen an appropriate sized ECU for your application, you'll find there'll be enough analog inputs, enough digital outputs and stepper wires or knock sensors um, and so on for everything you need. If you go through this process on, say, a 1500 series ECU and you run out of wires, then you're going to need to either need to upgrade to a 2500 or get an R expander. It's well worth going through this process before you actually buy an ECU. So now we've got a whole bunch of analog inputs available, let's assign some extra sensors that we want on this engine. So we go down here to functions, and let's say we also want to include on this setup some fuel pressure sensors. So if we come down here to the available functions of the ECU, so at the top we've got what's currently been enabled or installed on the ECU, down at the bottom we've got all the possible options on the ECU including the ones that haven't been enabled or installed. So let's scroll down and find fuel pressure sensor which we can find just here. We tick the assignment, it's an error because the current feature cannot be enabled until all pins required have been assigned and as you can see there's no assignment for the fuel pressure input. So if we click edit connection we can now choose an available wire. Be aware that not all pins will have a pull-up resistor option and certain sensors will require a pull-up resistor. AVI1 and AVI6 are shielded wires and Haltech recommend them for narrowband sensors but if you're not using narrowband sensors they can be used for other analog inputs, but I believe they're the two that do not have a pull-up resistor option. So in this case I'm going to pick one of the orange wires, which is AVI2, press OK, 
and as you can see here if you require a pull-up resistor for the sensor then make sure you enable it. If you don't do that you'll just get a 5 volts or 12 volts or whatever your sensor is reading and nothing will change. If you need a pull-up resistor, you need a pull-up resistor, choose it there. Next thing is the calibration of the sensor. You can now fill in what voltages relate to what pressures or you can use a pre-made um, bunch of sensor calibrations from Haltech for example, let's say we're using a 200 psi Haltech sensor or a 10 bar sensor or whichever one, we just click the right sensor and it will load the correct calibration in here. Click apply and let's go also add a few. Uh, let's have an oil pressure sensor, shall we? That's quite a good one to have. Let's say we're installing an oil pressure sensor on our, on our vehicle. Uh, I'm going to edit connection again. This one's going to be on AVI3, which is an orange and red wire. Again, this require, one requires a pull-up resistor. The calibration is going to be the same as the other one. We're going to use the 10-bar sensor from Haltech. I think that's the order the calibration is loaded, but let's just, out of routine, load it and apply. Um, what else we got on here that's currently going on? So air temp sensor has been pre-assigned for you. Coolant temperature has been pre-assigned. We've added the fuel pressure sensor. Idle control, you may want an idle control valve on certain cars. If you're doing drive-by wire or a different type of stepper motor or a simple valve, you need to pick the correct type of idle control valve. We're going to assign this to a uh, stepper one. Uh, what else we've got? We're going to do knock control, which requires knock protection. We're going to use the ECG knock sensor. Uh, we're going to do probably what a tachometer output to our dashboard has now been assigned to that pin. Yep, by default. We're going to do a thermal switch, turn our fans on and off. Let's assign that to a digital output, which is the DPO pins. We just go through and assign all the pins we need. If we get to a feature where we can't assign it because we've run out of wires, then we know we need a bigger model ECU or an IO expander but as you can see a lot of these default ones are pre-assigned so it's when you come along and say I want to have additional features that you'll find you need to start assigning pins and as you can see there's a whole range of possible possible features on these ECUs um, I'm trying to think of a good one boost control yeah we'll have boost control we want a boost control solenoid so we want to assign a boost control solenoid to one of the purple DPO wires as you can see we're starting to run low on DPO wires now but now if we go back to the IO report here you'll see that it will have created a lovely wiring diagram explaining what we want to wire from our loom to what on our engine we can also see we've got plenty of spare resources for future proofing we've got a spare DPO port there if you wanted to fit say I don't know a nitrous kit or We've got extra AVIs and the deep and the drive-by wire uh, pins still there if we want to go drive-by wire. We do have the ability for two knock sensors still. We could put some extra speed sensors in there. We still have the can wire. So this ECU is more than adequate for what we're planning on doing. So if we play apply and OK, all those features are now enabled in that map, and we've proven that we've got enough pins for what we require to do. If you were doing this on a 550 or 750 and you got to this stage, you'd have to start again and decide to use a higher model ECU.